Hello, Imboothers. Roy here, hanging out in my shared room called Stargazer Forest. It is a room I decorated with my friend Beetle using the shared room package. By the way, wanted to mention this video isn't sponsored. If it was, maybe I could afford a headset that wasn't held together with duct tape. <laughs> anyway, on with creating. I am starting with a male torso. You can use the default male or female torso, or even use your own body shape like I am doing here. I'm going to start by adding a mesh, and it will just be a simple cube. After selecting my new cube, I'll switch to edit mode, and I'll start to position it so it's relatively sized over the torso. You can press the S key for scale, and then just drag your mouse and keep dragging until it's about the size you want. And I'll move it up a bit so it's over the shoulders a bit more. And I'll just center it a bit more along the Y axis. You can then press S and Y to scale it along the Y axis. And I'll hit R and then X to rotate this back a bit. This is going to be a crop top, so I actually want it to be a little bit shorter on the avatar. Once you're happy with it, you can press Ctrl plus R to make an edge loop, and then use the scroll wheel to get a lot of even sections like this. And just uh, don't overdo it, just do as much as you think would be adequate to make the shape that you need. And I'm going to select these vertices individually to just kind of cut out the neck hole. And and I'm going to delete these little guys as well, just to make it uh, nice and wide. You can always uh, add some more in after as well. I'm going to quickly switch over to the face select tool so I can select more at a time. I'll make things a little bit faster. And switch between the wireframe and the solid mode by pressing Z back and forth. You can also select even more by pressing C and using the brush tool. To make the sleeves, I'm going to extrude the region by pressing E, and accidentally had a proportional editing uh, selected. After hitting Ctrl Z, I'm going to set the proportional editing to disable. Now I can extrude the sleeves by pressing E and X to make them wide. I'm just going to rotate the ends of the sleeves and turn them downward. And just pressing R and doing it a little bit by freehand. And using the blue arrow to move it down the Z axis. I'll just do that for each side. Uh, you can actually use a mirror modifier, but I want my shape to be a little bit more organic. I'm going to start working on the shape around the neck hole here. Just moving the vertices out so they're not clipping into the body. And this will be, of course, done a little bit at a time. Uh, you can also uh, select the vertices here, press F to make a face, and filling in the little area there. And press A to select all. And I went to Mesh, Faces, and then Shade Smooth. And I can see it's no longer so uh, polygonal looking. And I'm going to make a few cuts by pressing Ctrl R and using the scroll wheel. And there we go. And I'm going to delete the stuff out of the bottom here by using the brush tool, which is C. And delete vertices. I'm going to edit the geometry a bit further by merging some vertices. You can do that by selecting two or more. Then you press W and merge at center. And I'm also going to make some cuts here by selecting this one and pressing K. And I'll make a little line here. That just helps the tries know which direction to face. And I'll delete the excess geometry in here since the arm kind of needs a hole there. After having a little look over, I'm going to select all by pressing A. And then W and Smooth to kind of uh, automatically smooth the geometry a bit. Going back into wireframe mode, I'm going to select some vertices under the arms here. 
and turn proportional editing back on. Then press scale X to kind of move it in a little bit. And you can always adjust things a little bit so it's uh, moving around the median point there. Pressing Alt and the right mouse button lets you select an edge loop. To get things ready for UV unwrapping, you press Control E and mark seam. I'm going to create a new edge loop along the shoulders here for making uh, more seams. Control E, mark seam. And I'll move this out of the shoulder area a bit too with the proportional editing. I'll speed this up a little as I edit the shape a bit more. Since this top is going to be layered over the body, it's good to have some space so that the skin doesn't clip through. This top is made so that you can do uh, shear derivations, but for um, other ones, you'll actually want to delete the geometry underneath so that nothing will clip through. That works better on things such as sweaters or things that are a little bit more skin tight and not meant to be shear. Now that I have all my seams in place, I'm going to get the mesh ready for UV unwrapping, so I'll make a few different materials for it. Going over to the Properties Editor, I'll make a few new materials and give them names so I can tell which part is which. For this mesh, I'm going to have a front, a back, and the sleeves on different maps. And in order to do this, you actually have to assign them as well. So I'll select uh, the geometry for the front by using the brush tool by pressing C. Once all the relevant geometry is selected, you press Assign. And there's a couple different options for unwrapping. First, you press U, then you go to Unwrap. And I'm going to use a Project from View to start out with. This can have some errors with the sides. Uh, I did notice I accidentally selected part of the back. I'll just quickly assign that to its own material. It'll be the same process of just uh, selecting all the uh, faces that I want to be a part of the back map. Another method of selecting is by pressing B, and you can use the drag tool to select a larger area. Now I can assign that to the back map. I pressed uh, project from view again for the back map. This can have uh, errors like I was saying earlier, since it does seem to be piling up the sides too much. So I'll actually probably uh, change that. But first I'll create and assign the sleeves to the raw material. For that, I'm just going to press U and unwrap. And there's a couple more uh, pieces than I want there to be. So I'm going to remove the upper seam. So I'll select this. And to select that part, and press Control e Clear Seam. And I'll just uh, select the sleeves again. You can actually do that from the material properties, but for some reason I decided to use the brush tool. So once I have these selected again, I'll unwrap it so that I can get uh, the two sleeves separate the way I want to. After giving my mesh another look over, I decide I actually want to add a little bit more geometry to add a few wrinkles along the front. Using the knife tool by pressing K, I decide to cut in a few places where I think the shirt would maybe wrinkle up a bit if it's just uh, kind of floating off the body a bit. And I'm trying to keep the mesh relatively simple, so I don't want to overdo it. I'm just going to eyeball a 
where I think that some of the wrinkles would lie. It's also good to keep in mind the final mesh will be in triangles, even though I am working with quads right now. Meshing can be a very time-consuming process, but it's also very rewarding to be able to make whatever you want. With the shape looking how I want, I'm going to switch over to object mode. After doing a quick step, I'm going to parent the t-shirt to the armature that the torso is already parented to. I do this by pressing Ctrl P and parent to armature. I'm going to transfer the weights from the torso to the t-shirt. This will make the t-shirt move the same as the torso and prevent clipping. This is done by first selecting the torso, the armature, and then having the t-shirt as the active object. Switching to weight paint, I turn it over to vertex mode. And with everything selected, I go over to the weight tool, scroll down to transfer weight, transfer by name, and you can test it by moving the bones or using an animation. And you'll see it's not perfect, so there are some things that you will have to manually adjust. I often like to pose the armature and a few different ways that it would be used in Imvu, usually with the arms down. And you can actually preview this in edit mode by going over to the wrench tab uh, over here. And you can go through these options. One will just show you a ghost, and the other one will actually show the full geometry down. I'm going to make a few more loop cuts here just to smooth out the shoulders a bit. And as you can see when I select each vertex now, you can actually see the weight values along the side there. This includes all the bones, which is unnecessary, but you can actually shorten up this list. So first I'm going to go back and select everything. On the Tools tab, I will go down to the Weight tool and press Limit Total. The number here will be how many bones affect each vertex. In order to fix those stray vertices, I'll first select them, then select one with the weight that I want. Then I hit Copy so the stray ones take on the weight of the last selected. There are still some areas of clipping due to the geometry of the torso being different than the one of the shirt, so those will have to be manually adjusted. First I'm going to adjust the neck here by extruding this region and shrinking it in just so I can make it a little bit smoother up here. Using the same tools I already mentioned, I'm going to make a few more adjustments. Thank you. 
Now that the shirt finally looks how I want it, I'm going to edit the torso a little bit since there is a bit of a mistake here. This is the seam where the torso will actually connect with the pants and it has a specific weight it has to use so that it will connect with any other uh, default bottoms. And you can actually manually edit the weights in right here. And so it's 0.5 for the one and 0.5 for the other. And then you just copy them the same way I did with the shirt. And now they're all in an even line and I know will connect with the bottoms without any gaps. Going back over to the shirt now, I'm going to finish unwrapping it and we'll actually start to make the textures for it. First I'll do a quick save, then I'll go down to image, new image, and make a bit of a light gray here, give it an appropriate name, and I'll set the aspect ratio to be 512 by 512. Of course, you'll want to scale that down when you actually create your texture for Invu. And after unwrapping that again, I actually like that a lot better without editing it much. Just going to scooch it up a little bit and press S and scale it down a little bit just to give it a bit more of a margin. And I'll repeat that with the back as well. And you can see the former one there. I will uh, change that. You can actually manually adjust the side so you won't get that overlap. But instead, I think I'm just going to press U and then wrap it. Yes, that actually looks a lot better. Just upside down. <laughs> just going to adjust that a little bit with the proportional editing. I'm going to have to scale it down a lot though. And straighten that up a little bit. You can press A to select all, and then R to rotate. And if you press 180 degrees, you'll actually have it uh, completely turned over. You can also flip it, but then it would be backwards, so then you'd have to flip it horizontal as well. I'm just going to scale it so it fits within the border a little bit better. And now for the front side. Pretty much the same process again. I'm going to make a new image and it will have the same aspect ratio and color. And then you unwrap and that actually turned out pretty good too. I'm just going to adjust it a little bit more so I can make use of all the space in the texture. So that's S to scale, Y to scale it vertically, and G to move it within there and scale it a little bit along the X axis. And I'll move that down a little bit. Or actually, I'll scale it. And that's looking really nice now. Now I'm going to bake a shadow map onto this to create a simple texture. So first I'll go back into object mode and I'll change the view to rendered so I can actually see what the final product will look like. I already added a light source when I created the torso. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. First, I'm just going to adjust the position of the pose. That's just uh, looking things over a little bit. To bake the texture, you go over to the camera, scroll, and I like to up the margin a little bit just to create a bit more uh, space to make it a bit more seamless. I turned the view back to render, and before I decided to actually do the bake, I wanted to add another light source, so I went back into object, add lamp, sun, then I actually rotated it a little bit along the x axis just to be kind of in the front a bit. Add another quick look over and decided in object mode that I'll add a modifier and this one is a smooth modifier. I'll not apply it but just use it so the baked texture will look a little bit smoother.
After a few more adjustments, I finally decided that my mesh was ready to bake. So I just hit bake and now you have all these lovely textures. Now there are ways to make more realistic or advanced textures, but I'm kind of used to drawing mine, so I'm just going to export these as they are. I feel like these do kind of help highlight the shape and provide a bit of a guide for where you draw your textures. And it also makes it a little bit of a more of a clean image for texture drivers to be able to make things however they want. Now that I have my images saved, I'm going to combine the meshes by pressing Ctrl J. Now I'll give the mesh its own name. Make sure the mesh and the armature are both selected and export as FBS. Now I want to make sure not to apply the modifiers in the render setting or else that will apply the modifier such as the smooth one. And I'll just find a new folder for this to export to. And then I can finally actually bring it into InVu. So I'll go to create mode. And then derive new product. And I'm going to go to the empty derivable. And with the FBX, I can actually import it directly. Since this is a shirt, I have to use the number 2, so it will work over the torso. Since I use the old armature, I have to adjust the scale to 0 0.01. It's one texture on the torso is left over from another project, so I'm actually going to edit that. I'm also going to check two-sided on the different parts of the shirt too. Now the mesh is done and ready for texture. Once your product is submitted and in peer review, you can go back to hanging out with your friends. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. And as always, take care.